Good morning and a very warm welcome to Lindsay, morning, Lindsay Union's Easter morning service wherever you're listening, wherever you're watching from. A very happy Easter to you. Our service began with uh, one of our young people, Matthew Bissett, playing on the trumpet, uh, the tune of See What a Morning, uh, Stuart Townend's Resurrection Hymn, which we will sing a little bit later on. I'd like to say thank you very much to everybody who's helped with the service this morning. Donald McLeod, our pastoral assistant, will lead our prayers for others. Jan Reed will lead us in our readings from the Bible. Johannes Timothy has provided the music for us. And there are activities online uh, for children on Lighthouse Online. From Good Friday, we move to Easter. And at the beginning of our service, Abigail Bissett is going to read a poem her mum Shona has written and it speaks of everything that God has done for us in Jesus. Easter poem. New shoots push towards the light, small buds burst open that were shut tight. Billowy blossom softly clothes trees, then floats away in the gentle breeze. Evenings lengthen as darkness hides, signs of summer as the sun starts to shine. Doors are flung open to let in spring air, and cobwebs are lifted, life's everywhere. We remember that Friday Jesus died, nailed to a cross and crucified. We remember the crowd that taunted and jibed as he sent Jesus to be crucified. As our gentle Saviour gave his life, man was forgiven for all his strife. Every human heart made clean, and every sinner now redeemed. So let us sing loud this Easter day, the stone rolled away and where at once our Christ lay, he sits at God's right hand on high, the Lord that created the sun, sea and sky. Thank you, Abigail. And now let's turn to God in prayer, asking God's blessing on us as we come to worship together and that God will prepare us to worship. So let us pray. Loving God, on this Easter morning, we pray that through the Holy Spirit, you will draw us to you. Help us to meet with Jesus and to be able to know and believe that he is risen. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you will bring your light and your love into our lives. Fill us with your peace and your presence, we pray. Loving God, through the death and resurrection of your son Jesus, you offer us forgiveness when we ask. And we pray now that you will prepare us to meet with you. Help us now to ask for forgiveness for our mistakes and the ways we have gone our own way instead of your way. Loving Father in heaven, we pray that you will forgive us now in Jesus' name. Fill us now with your peace. And as we meet together to worship, we pray that you will teach us and help us so that we can follow Jesus this week and all the days that lie ahead. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So now let's worship God together as we will sing, See what a morning, gloriously bright.
today, Easter Sunday, is the most important day in the Christian year. But we're not together and we're not together in our own building and, and that's hard and it's strange. In John's Gospel's account of the first Easter, John reminds us that the church began in a way that seems so strange to them. The church began with the resurrection of Jesus, but they were not together and not in a building. So our first reading takes us to just three people. First Mary Magdalene, then Peter and John, and not in a building, but in a garden. John chapter 20 and verses 1 to 9. And Jan Reed will read this Bible reading. The first reading is from John chapter 20, verses 1 to 9. The Resurrection Early on Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. She ran and found Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved. She said, They have taken the Lord's body out of the tomb, and I don't know where they have put him. Peter and the other disciple ran to the tomb to see. The other disciple outran Peter and got there first. He stooped and looked in and saw the linen cloth lying there, but he didn't go in. Then Simon Peter arrived and went inside. He also noticed the linen wrappings lying there, while the cloth that had covered Jesus' head was folded up and lying to the side. Then the other disciple also went in, and he saw and believed. For until then, they hadn't realised that the scriptures said he would rise from the dead. So, at the very first Easter, John introduces us at the beginning of this reading just to one person, one woman, Mary, Mary Magdalene. And she's only recently appeared in John's Gospel. We first met her in John's Gospel, standing at the foot of the cross as Jesus was crucified. And John takes us to be with her on that first Easter. And with her, John, the Gospel writer, takes us to Jesus' tomb, cut in a rock, the tomb that was owned by Joseph of Arimathea, but given for Jesus' burial. And the Gospel writer takes us with Mary in her shock, in this strange and new situation. As she says, they've taken away my Lord. Looking into the tomb, she doesn't see what she's expecting. She doesn't see Jesus' body. All that she was expecting has gone. And she's disorientated and confused and anxious and afraid. We can identify with Mary each Easter, but perhaps especially this Easter, as we hear her say, they have taken away my... So Mary invites us to stand with her and to say to God in our frustration, they have taken away this new situation, this awful virus situation. They have taken away health. They have taken away loved ones. They have taken away my peace about the future. They have taken away my routine. They have taken away my usual way of working. They have taken away the groups and ways in which I meet with people. They have taken away the places I go to. They have taken away my plans and so much more. With Mary, we say, they have taken away. So Mary, saying they have taken away my Lord, she, she runs now to the city and she finds Peter and John and then they go running to the tomb and then John the beloved disciple eventually looks in and we're told he saw and he believed he believed his is the first Easter faith 
he is the first one recorded who believed that Jesus is risen. It's true, so unexpected, so unprecedented. He's risen. So let's recap what we've got if we're thinking about John and seeing and believing. What do we have here? We have nobody in the tomb. It's empty. Mary has seen that. Peter has seen that. John has seen that. Jesus' body is not there. He's not simply fainted on the cross and been put away somewhere. He is not there. Then the second thing we see is this is all just so unexpected, this absence of the body, Jesus not there. Neither they nor anyone was expecting that in the first century at that time. And the third thing we, we see is our first witness for the resurrection is a woman. Now, we might not want to, to say this or think this, but back then, a woman's testimony, a woman's witness was seen as unreliable. And the fact that John and the other gospel writers mentioned that women were the first people to see Jesus shows their record must be true. They wouldn't have wanted to invent that. So we see a woman is the first witness. We see the tomb is empty, there is no body. We see that it's just so unexpected. And we pray for God's help to believe and to trust for ourselves Lord, help us to trust and to have faith this Easter. Often Christians say at, at Easter and encourage one another in faith by saying, the Lord is risen and responding, he is risen indeed, alleluia. So let us greet one another in faith as we say, the Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And we continue to worship by singing our hymn, Jesus Christ is risen today. Hallelujah.
We've come into the church building for the rest of our Easter Sunday morning service. And behind me is the stained glass window depicting Jesus' resurrection and along from it, the window that depicts the walk on, to the road, on the road to Emmaus on the first Easter um, afternoon as Jesus walked along with his two disciples. Also in the church is uh, a flower display on the communion table, which Margaret Reed has kindly prepared and We'll see that a little bit later on in our service. As we are in the, the church building now, for some of us, that gives us a sense of familiarity and reassurance. For some of us, it maybe just heightens the, the sense of we, we find it hard when we're apart. We can't worship together and particularly sing together. These weeks, they're full of so much worry for our country for the world and for the poorest in the world, as well as those who are suffering in our own country. I know some worry about the church as well and think, well, if people aren't used to worshiping together on a Sunday morning, will the church really survive? The story of the first church on the first Easter is, is one of hope. On the first Easter morning, it looked as though the church was done, completely finished. Jesus was crucified and it looked as though the Jesus movement was stamped out before it even got started. But of course it hadn't. Jesus is alive and it was only the very beginning of the church. So our second reading continues John's account of the first Easter and in the garden and Mary and Mary now encountering the risen Jesus. John's Gospel, chapter 20, and verse 10 to verse 18. And Jan Reed is again reading for us. The second reading is from John chapter 20, verses 11 to 18. Jesus appears to Mary Magdalene. Mary was standing outside the tomb crying, and as she wept, she stooped and looked in. She saw two white-robed angels sitting at the head and foot of the place where the body of Jesus had been lying. Why are you crying? The angels asked her. Because they have taken away my Lord, she replied, and I don't know where they have put him. She glanced over her shoulder and saw someone standing behind her. It was Jesus, but she didn't recognize him. Why are you crying? Jesus asked her. Who are you looking for? She thought he was the gardener. Sir, she said, if you have taken him away, tell me where you have put him and I will go and get him. Mary, Jesus said. She turned towards him and exclaimed, Teacher! Don't cling to me, Jesus said, for I haven't yet ascended to the Father, but go and find my brothers and tell them that I am ascending to my Father and your Father, my God and your God. Mary Magdalene found the disciples and told them, I have seen the Lord. Then she gave them his message. Amen. For the church, as for others, it's so important at this time to keep together and to keep in touch. I think we're hopefully trying to do that a bit within Lenza Union as um, elders distribute the, the updates each week and we try um, to keep in touch and to help folk where we can. Um, on Friday night, we had uh, a Good Friday service online with Zoom where people could see each other. And as well as hearing again Jesus' words from the cross and being drawn into the power of his love, um, on Good Friday, I think there was a, a sense uh, of those that took part, and there were about 70 people who took part, of just what we get from seeing one another and being able to hear one another's voices, keep together and keep in touch as God's family. So the reading that Jan just read for us there, there's a bit about that, about keeping together and keeping in touch. It takes us to John's account of the first church meeting 
a gathering of Christ's people on the first Easter as Mary goes back from the garden and tells the other disciples what was going on. So let's go in, in our minds to that room that was locked and Mary coming in hot foot from the garden and the disciples say, well, Mary, what happened? Tell us, tell us. And the first thing Mary says is, do you know, I didn't recognize him. I thought he was the gardener and it was only after a wee while that I realized that it actually was Jesus. I didn't recognize him at first. And that makes us think, are there times when, when Jesus is, is with us, right beside us, but we don't recognize it? We don't see that he's there. Either he's, he's acting in, with, with greater love than, than we, can, we can recognize, and we're just not sure if he's there. You maybe know the, uh, the, the famous poem, Footprints, where the Christian asks, Lord, where were you? I only saw one set of footprints on the sand at this difficult point in my life. And the Lord says, well, those were my footprints because I was carrying you. And Mary said, I just didn't recognize him. I wasn't expecting this. I wasn't expecting to see him in the garden. There's something profound about the gardener in the garden. It takes us back to the book of Genesis, the first book in the Bible, and creation and the Garden of Eden, and the first gardener, Adam, before sin, before his mistakes, before being taken out of the garden. And so the first Easter morning, John's giving us a picture, God is giving us a picture of a new creation, a new start, through the resurrection of Jesus and a second Adam, a new gardener, Jesus, the perfect and sinless one who's now bringing order out of chaos, bringing light where there was darkness, bringing life where there was death. I, I nearly didn't recognize him. I thought he was the gardener. And it makes us think, have there been times in our lives just now, recently or in the past, where we, Jesus has been there, but maybe we haven't recognized him? And on this Easter, we pray through the Holy Spirit for faith to be able to recognize what Jesus is doing in our lives just now, and what he has been doing. As we say, Lord, risen Lord, show us how you've been walking alongside us. Help us to recognize the ways that you've been carrying us. Help us to see and know your presence in our lives now. So after Mary said, I nearly didn't recognize him, the other disciples said, well, Mary, tell us what happened next. And she says, well, do you know what he called me? And they said, well, tell us, what did he call you? Thinking that it might be something new, something unusual. And she said, he just called me by my name. He called out Mary same as he always did, the same as ever. Easter faith is that the risen Lord Jesus is with us always, and he's with us now, beside us, knowing our name, knowing what's going on in our lives, knowing the situations that we are in just now, and calls us by our own name. Part of Easter faith is having faith that he calls us now by our name. And in the stillness, may we know him beside us, calling our own individual name, Dan, whatever your name is,
the same as always. Yesterday, today and forever, Jesus is the same and calls us by our own name. And then Mary says in that group of disciples, and do you know what I called him? And they said, tell us, wh what did you call him? What did you call him in this new and changed situation? And she said, I, I called him what I've always called him, Rabboni, teacher. That's what they would have called Jesus in, in, in those days. They were the disciples, they were the followers, he was the teacher. On Easter Sunday, she called out, teacher. And that's Easter faith as well, recognizing that Jesus is alive and he has more that he wants to teach us, more that we need to learn. Part of Easter faith is calling out to him, teacher, teach me. Teach your world. I have so much that I need to learn. Teach me how you want me to live, to relate to others, to act now in this moment in my family and in the world. Teacher. There's a lot of talk about what will happen after this crisis is over. And we go back to normal. It's too early to draw lessons from what we're going through just now. It's, it's too difficult and it's too, there's too much anxiety. But when we hear Mary calling out teacher, it makes us reach out to Christ and say, maybe you don't want us just to go back to normal, to the same ways. We're learning to shop differently. We're learning to relate differently. We're learning how to be church differently. Maybe, living Lord, you have new things you want to teach us and new things you want to teach your world and teach us how to care for your world. And part of Easter faith is calling out to him, Lord, teach me how to be your disciple. Teach us how to be your church now. And then the disciples say, is that all? Is that, is that what happened? You called him teacher and he called you Mary. And she says, no, no, listen, he had a message for you, a message for all of you. And this is it. Tell my friends, I am going to my father and your father, to your God and my God. Your God and my God? Here Jesus teaches us about a whole new relationship made possible through the death and resurrection of Jesus. Beforehand, when Jesus spoke about the Father, he had either said, the Father, I will ask the Father, and we will send you the Holy Spirit, the Father, or he talked about my Father. In my Father's house are many mansions. But now, on the first Easter, he says, my Father and your Father, my God and your God, this family, which he draws us into. So what's changed because of Easter? What's changed is that through Jesus' death, we have now the promise of forgiveness, which enables us to be part of God's family, to freely draw near to him, to freely relate to him. Often we, we like to think, do you know, I, I'm not bad the way that I am, just going on as I am. But what we remembered on Good Friday reminds us Jesus gave his life for the sin of the world and I'm part of that. I'm one of those 
that makes mistakes. I'm one of those that doesn't go God's way. And I need Jesus' forgiveness if I'm going to be part of his family. Lord, forgive me in Jesus' name so that I may call you my Father, my God. And by Jesus' resurrection, he promises us that this new family life we have with God, it's, it lasts forever. And nothing in life or in death can shake it or break it or sever it. So that was some first church gathering. He calls us by our own name. We call him teacher. And he brings us into this family of God's people. So as Christ's family, Let's join together now in the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now Donald MacLeod, our pastoral assistant, will lead us in our prayers for others and ourselves. Let us pray. By the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, God gave us new birth into a living hope. Lord God Almighty, on this day, we come before you with our praise and thanksgiving. This day which speaks of the tomb bursting open in the victory of Christ for us all. The risen Christ was witnessed there and then, that he also might be witnessed here and now. Hear us as we pray for situations of despair that there may be living hope. We pray especially for those in medical teams confronting death on a daily basis. Strengthen them, we pray, and amidst intimations of mortality, may there be glimpses of living hope which is eternal in Jesus Christ our Lord. We pray for those who know their earthly journey is coming to an end. Comfort and strengthen them in their final days with the certain hope of the resurrection. We pray for the bereaved, that their despair may be not lasting, but give way to the eternal comfort that is in the risen Christ. Lord our God, we come before you with our prayers at a time of fear and uncertainty. Guide our leaders to know the best actions to take, Move amongst our people that care and compassion may abound. Support those who have cause to be afraid, the poor, the homeless, the weak, those dependent on others and whose daily existence is fragile. Lord, amidst our fears and uncertainties, to whom can we turn? For you have the words of eternal life. Hear us, O God, as we pray for the effect of the lockdown on people who live alone. May they know that they're not alone through caring contact with friends and family. Hear us as we pray for those compelled to live together in relationships already strained. Help them in these situations that new, loving, peaceful relationships may be formed. Hear us as we pray for those in care homes, surrounded by others yet unable to be visited by those whom they love. We pray for the staff involved in social care and the critical and dangerous work they do. May they be provided with the resources they need 
and protected from harm. Lord God, you are the God of living hope in Jesus Christ. Light that flame of hope in all those myriad situations that your grace, mercy and peace may be known amongst us. Finally, we pray for ourselves. Strengthen our faith, we pray, that we may know the hope to which we are called and the riches of the glorious inheritance among the saints who have gone before. May the risen Christ go with us to our journey's end. These prayers we offer in the name and for the sake of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, be all glory as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Just before our service ends, let's take a look again at the picture that we've looked at through Lent, painted by one of our church members here. A picture of a sunrise, of hope, of new life dawning through Christ risen at Easter. The pain of the cross is over. Sin is defeated on the cross, represented by the folds in the, the placard hammered to the, to the top of the cross, I-N-R-I, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. And we go forward in hope, trusting that Jesus is risen and go in his strength to whatever awaits as we sing together, Thine be the glory, risen, conquering Son. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his risen Son, Jesus Christ. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest and remain upon you this Easter day and always. Amen. <laughs>